In geometrical optics, we are interested in studying the propagation of light. And when we talk about light, we talk about waves. Let's consider a plain monochromatic wave. For a plain monochromatic wave, we can write down the expression for the wave like this. And when I say wave, I mean a function f. And you can consider this function f to be either one component of the electric field, for example, E sub j, or the magnetic field, B sub j. It is one of these components. And this is equal to a constant that I will call lowercase a times the complex exponential e to the i, where i is the imaginary unit. And then here we have the wave vector, k, which is a vector, dot product with the position r, and r has three components, x, y, z, for example, minus omega t, where omega is the frequency of the wave, t is the time coordinate, and then we also have a shift, if you want, plus alpha. Alpha is just a constant. We can put together this part here, and if we use tensors, we can rewrite this using tensor notation like this, k nu multiplied by x nu. In geometrical optics, we generalize this expression here, which is related to monochromatic waves, like this. We consider f to be equal to some function a. In this case, a is not a constant anymore. It will be a function of the position, the position vector r, and time t. And then we multiply by a complex exponential e to the i, and instead of this expression here, we have the so-called icono and usually it is denoted by psi, psi of r t, like this. When this wave here is almost coincident with a plane wave, in this case, psi will be almost equal to that. If k is very large, we are in the case of geometrical optics, and I will say something more about this. If k is large, it means that for small displacements, delta r, and you can see it from here, if we vary r by a very small quantity, this would allow us to study the wave properties as if f were almost a plane wave. Because when we move by delta r, if delta r is small, the amplitude of the wave would not change much if k is very large. We cannot change r too much without spanning the entire wave because we would go all along the period of the wave. But if delta r is small, a will not change too much. That's what we are assuming here, that the amplitude will not change too much when we study the properties of the wave. Over small regions and time intervals, we can expand psi using a series. So we can write psi equal to psi naught. By psi naught, I mean psi of zero, zero, where this zero here is a vector. Of three components related to r plus r dot product with d psi over dr which is the gradient of psi plus t d psi over dt so i have implicitly chosen the origin for coordinates and time within the space region and time interval under consideration and from this expression here for psi, now we are assuming that we are considering almost plane waves. So we are in the limit where k is large. Therefore, we can make this approximation here. And therefore, we can consider displacements to be small enough so that we can expand psi into a Taylor series. And now if we write it in this fashion, we see that there is a very marked similarity with this expression here. So from here, we see that k, the vector k should be equal to the gradient of psi, d psi dr, and omega should be minus d psi over dt. Therefore, we can define the four vector related to the wave number. This four vector is k nu, which is minus d psi over dx nu, where nu is an integer which goes from 0 to 3, so 0, 1, 2, and 3. From electromagnetism, we know that the vector k, in particular its magnitude squared, is equal to omega squared over c squared. 
This is clear from the wave equation. And this equation can also be rewritten like this. This i over dx nu, this i over dx nu with a lower index here to the node that we have to sum over nu. And this is equal to zero. You can check that this equation here is exactly coincident with that equation. And this is called the iconal equation. How can we check that this equation here leads to that? Well, we know that we can rewrite this as this i over dx0, this i over dx0, plus this i over dx1, this i over dx1, plus this i over dx2, this i over dx2, plus this i over dx3, this i over dx3, equal to zero. And if we use the metric tensor, era mu nu, which is the Lorentz metric tensor, we can lower or raise indices very easily. Special indices will change sign, whereas the time index will remain with the same sign. So in here, I can also write this as this i over dx0 squared minus the gradient this i over dr squared equal to zero. But this is just omega squared over c squared because remember that x0 is equal to c times t, whereas this one here is just the vector k. So you get exactly that equation. But we can also derive the iconal equation in a different manner. We can rewrite the wave equation, and the wave equation using the function that I called f can be written like this. It is del squared over dx nu dx nu. It can be written in tensor notation, or it can also be written with this symbol, which represents a square, and it is called the D'Alembert operator. Now, if we use this expression here, which is the wave equation, let me remind that, and we also substitute for f the expression a, which in this case is a function, which depends on position and time, multiplied by e to the i psi, we replace this expression here, and we have to take derivatives. So if you take those two derivatives, you can rewrite this expression here, del squared a over dx nu, dx nu times e to the i psi plus 2i dA over dx nu, d psi over dx nu, e to the i psi plus if del squared psi over dx nu dx nu minus d psi over dx nu d psi over dx nu times f equal to zero. And now, in geometrical optics, we know that k is a very large quantity in magnitude, and also the frequency is a very large number. This is a consequence also of the equation k squared equal to omega squared over c squared. So if the vector k is large, also omega should be large. This means that if we go back and check the expression for psi in this case here, psi will be almost equal to this expression here. Because k is large and omega is large, so when we expand psi using a Taylor series like this, psi will be almost equal to that expression. And since k and omega are large, also psi will be a very large quantity. And this means that in this expression here, there are some terms that are negligible. The only term that will be non-negligible is this one, because it contains powers of two of the function psi whereas this term only contains the first power as well as this one, whereas this one here does not contain any power of psi. And I'm not considering these complex exponentials here because they are just oscillatory terms. Therefore, it means that if we can neglect this part, it means that this would have to be zero. But what is this? This psi over dx nu, this psi over dx nu equal to zero. This is exactly the iconal equation, which I have already written here, and I have derived it from a different assumption.